Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, Learn Smart Coding. This is Karthik. Thanks for joining with me today. So in this video, what I'm going to cover is how to add the authentication and authorization part in your Angular application. The concept that I'm going to use is very popular one and very secured one, which is Azure Active Directory Business to Consumer. In short form, we will call it as Azure AD B2C. So we will go through the Azure AD B2C concepts and we will also see how to do the app registration and configure these things in your web API and the Angular application. This is part six of the video series. And in this video, we're going to see how to configure the code in your web API and the Angular SPA single page application for us to show and make it work for our Azure AD B2C authentication and authorization. Okay, now we created earlier a domain name called learn smart coding b2c demo right so that is already there if you see that's the current one that is present right but i also have another one called just learn smart coding okay which will end with dot on microsoft.com okay so i'm going to show you what i did there it is exactly same including the name everything is same the app registration everything is same you see this user flow names are same under the app registration, I, I will have four app registrations. Uh, first two one is for the previous video and then the last two one is the essential product API and the spa. Uh, meaning I'm showing you the, the scopes that I showed you, everything the same. The only difference between uh, this and that is the name of the active directory, okay? So let's take this as an example. Like I said, everything is same. There's no change. The permission granted for the APIs, whatever the scopes was exposed, and whatever we configured in the return, uh, you know, URL, uh, redirect URL, everything is same. Okay, so having said this, everything is ready. So we have configured the authentication for the API, the SPA, everything is good. Okay, what we are going to do is we're going to open up the first uh, web API application. So whoever uh, doesn't know about this, this coding is present in GitHub slash learn smart coding slash uh, essential product API. That's the Git repository. Okay, so I've created a separate branch for this B2C so that uh, whoever doesn't want this, they don't get confused. So you can uh, you can see my description of this video to find out the exact branch name. Now let's open up this project and the first thing that you need to do, right? Go to the startup class and the coding from 30 to line number 37. Okay, so that's the authentication configuration that we are doing that, okay, this is the uh, authentication schema and please take certain configuration from the configuration and you see this Azure AD B2C, that's the section and under the section you have instance, instances of our uh, learn smart coding uh, dot on microsoft.com. See, I'll go to the application and I'll show you. Okay, let's click on this application you see this, uh, the application URI, okay? So that's the URI. If you click on the endpoints, you'll be able to see all the different endpoints for uh, OAuth, OpenID, SAML, and all those things, okay? So we're going to pick up few informations from this registration that we did. The first one is the Microsoft, uh, the learn smart coding dot B2C login.com, okay? That's the instance. Client ID is the one that I picked up from the client ID. If you go to the overview, Okay, overview of this app registration. You see this, the one that I'm highlighting, application ID, which is also called client ID. Okay, so that's the one that ends with three zero. So that's the one that ends with three zero. Okay, so I copy paste it under the client ID. You replace your own client ID. Okay, and the callback path is the sign in OIDC and then the domain. Domain is the active directory that we were talking about. Okay, uh, in the first part, I showed you learn smart coding B2C demo. Here I'm talking about learn smart coding uh, dot on microsoft.com. So this is the active directory where we have configured all these things. Okay. So, and that is the name that goes here under the domain. And you see the other three things, they are exactly what we created in the user flows. Okay. The name you place it here and the portal should match. Even one spelling mistake will not work. So make sure you copy paste the names properly. You can provide whatever name you want. It's all about, uh, you know, placing it in the right place correctly. Okay, so now we are done with that authentication. Uh, there are a couple more things, quick things to do in the web API. If you scroll down, you need to add the uh, cross origin resource sharing access. See, for now, I am running this application locally. So I have, I, I allowed only the uh, local host 4200 application, whichever is running from that port is allowed to access this web API. You cannot just put a wildcard to say everything can be loaded. That's not 
uh, acceptable when you add the authentication. So let's say you're deploying this application to the server, right? I have deployed already into the Azure server, right? So in that case, instead of this localhost 4200, you can uh, you know configure it in a way where it picks up from the environment file or if you know only one server is there, you can actually provide the server name here, okay? So if I provide the server name, no one, you, uh, no, none of you people uh, can access it. So I'm going to provide the local host so that both applications running from my local host will be able to run and access it. And then the next thing, right, you, we will create a folder called uh, authorization policies and create a file called scopes requirement. See scope requirement class is not required, uh, but uh, basically what it is doing is, it is checking the incoming request with the JWT token. At least one of these scopes are present in the JWT. Only then it will allow the request. If not, it will reject the request with the 401. Okay. So that's the uh, thing. Sorry, 403 authorization. Authenticator is already done, but authorization is not accepted. And then um, we will also enable the authentication and authorization in the configure section. Okay, so there are only a couple of things that we did. The scope name should also match. We have categories read, write, products read, write. Now let's open up this in local and try to execute one of the calls. See, you are getting 200. Okay, ideally you're not supposed to get 200, right? Okay, that's getting because if you go to this category controller, right now there is no attribute called authorize. Okay, so you need to provide an authorized attribute in the controller on top of what we already configured. Only then, so so we got the result because we don't have an authorized attribute. So we need to provide an authorized attribute. On top of it, what I'm doing is here you can actually specify a required scope. See, I'm going to give you different flavors. Okay, so if I put required scope and add the scope here, which is categories dot read, as long as the request has this category dot read scope, right? Uh, the request will be uh, allowed to enter into this category controller at the all the method level okay now let's take a look at the different approach go to this product controller here on each method i'm providing what scope is required okay for all the get methods it has to be a products.read and for all the write methods the scopes with products.write should be there okay now we configured let's try it out let's click on execute you should ideally get 401 okay so we are getting 401 which is correct but it just says undocumented okay so let's add few more things here to make our swagger works nicely so if you see this right we already have uh, what kind of uh, response this each method can produce so we are going to add uh, two more thing called 401 authorized unauthorized uh, we're going to add two more things one is the 401 unauthorized and 403 forbidden okay what is forbidden in 401 401 if you don't have the token and 403 is you have a token you don't have that required scope to access a particular method so you're not allowed to access that that's when you will get 403 we will take a look at when we finish configuring our uh, angular application okay so you will now understand what is 40 so now you will understand what is 401 403 Okay, we will see all these things lively once we're done with the spa application. All right, so I'm verifying this. This is all good. Let's open up our second application, which is our Angular application. Okay, so now you see this 401, we configured it. Uh, we are able to now see uh, instead of undocumented, properly it is coming as 401. Okay, even if you try to execute the product, it is going to give us the same problem, meaning uh, the same kind of authentication thing. So let's click on this and uh, let's take a look what we get. All right, let's provide some number quickly. Oh, it's just not correct. Two. All right, clicked. Okay, we got 401. Good. This is expected only. Okay, so now our web API is actually protected. Now I have opened up the Angular application. See, uh, Angular application has couple of configuration. All these configuration has been already provided by the Microsoft uh, Azure Active Directory B two C uh, team. All what you need to do here is come to this authconfig.ts from the code that I'm providing. Okay, you need to just replace this auth uh, authority domain. Okay, the authority domain is the domain, the Active Directory domain name that you created, right? That one, and here b2c policy these three things has to match and uh, author under authority you see this uh, all the authorities is matching with uh, sign up sign in profile edit password edit like line number 40 all those things you need to provide okay just copy paste and one more important thing is this client id client id is has be taken from the 
uh, SPA application that we registered. Uh, so if you go to this application that we registered, we need to now go to our Angular application and take this client ID, also called as application ID. So copy this, which ends with E7E. Okay, I'm sure you see E7E. So I copy pasted this and then come to this last section where you provide the scopes. See, there are four scopes. I am requesting all the four scopes to be added here. An endpoint, it is pointing to our local, uh, locally running web API endpoint. And if you are pointing it to a deployed version, then you the deployed you know server URL will come here. Don't forget this. This is important. I was scratching my head as well for some time. So this endpoint, the scopes, and then the previously configured couple of sections has to be replaced with your values. This is all self-descriptive. Okay, so don't worry, you can read it and find it. If you have any questions, you can always ask me in the comments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up these local OS 4200. See, as soon as it opened up, right, it figured out that I'm not authenticated and it is asking me to log in. So uh, I, since in the user flow, I already created, right, uh, I'm logging it with my details. Now the authentication is successful. I'm able to go to my page. It's It's taking some time to load. Okay, this is all first time. See, now, you know, uh, the details started loading. And if you click on the outgoing API, you see this bearer token, bearer followed by the encrypted token. If I copy this and go to this jwt.io, this is what I was trying to show you in the user flow. Basically, when you provide this, see this de decrypted content is coming to the right side. Here, whatever we collected in the user section, right, from our user attributes, they are all coming from the claims because we we checked a tick mark that okay these information needs to be in the claims that's why this claims are coming see basically these are all key value pairs and another one important thing is scope scp the scopes that we requested here right you see this four scopes that is what is coming there okay you see this now if i change this right i'm requesting some scope which is not present and if i try to reload what will happen um, i will uh, get a 403 you know why category controller rejected because right now the the authentication doesn't have the scope called categories dot read because we just changed it in our angular application right that's why we are authenticated we don't get 401 but we are not authorized we get the forbidden error which is 403 see once this happens a few data didn't come so our application broke okay so that that was the reason so that's the difference between 401 and 403 okay so if you if you change this right so this is what has been read okay so based on this only we are getting 403 and let me show you uh, by copying this uh, you know content into this web token and you can see now under the scp see categories are not present because category scopes are not present obviously our uh, category controller is expecting such scope and it will reject it okay so that's why it's rejected now let's undo these two things and uh, meaning categories dot read and write will be present in the scope and if i run this application everything should go smooth and see categories now returned all the categories and our application is back we have got all the details we are able to show this information and and if you want to try one more time just copy this bearer token and see i'm going to do this now you see this four scopes have started coming so four scopes are uh, been sent as the a scope in the api request and our api is happy to serve the request okay so you can click on this edit profile which will bring up whatever you saw like i said because you are already authenticated it is directly showing you uh, what you can edit on the screen only the display name can be edited for now because of my configuration so that is showing up that right and if you log out and um, what it will do is it will again bring up the screen but this time you can say forgot password see this forgot password would have not worked if you don't follow what i said in the second clip okay so this will work only when you configure that uh, you know self reset uh, checkbox in the sign up sign in section okay so don't forget that and uh, if you get any error let me know I, i'll always help that to help you all right now uh, just a quick thing okay so all what you need to be worried is uh, when you receive this application uh, code from the github right in a separate branch there will be couple of files will be affected like auth config header 
uh, you know, couple of other files will be affected. They're all pre-configured. Uh, I literally got that from Microsoft actually. Okay, so that's, as I said, there's nothing to hide with you guys. Okay, so there are plenty of source outside, meaning you just need to know how to do it in Azure portal. I'm actually a Azure certified developer. Uh, I've completed AZ204. I'm planning to show you more and more videos in Azure. Okay, so this one, like I said, you just have these two applications ready. Uh, just place replace the the client ID and other couple of configurations properly your application should start working uh, as it is okay so you you don't need to worry about anything else uh, I will provide a lot of links in this uh, code itself you can always refer uh, go there and read more about it and I'm happy to help you if you have any questions okay now in the next couple of videos I'll show you how to uh, you know configure your your identity provider like Google, Twitter, Facebook, and how do you uh, put that here so that um, you know Google thing also will come up as an option for the users to uh, you know log in with their Gmail address. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. The six videos will will conclude uh, the complete uh, Azure AD B two C authentication and authorization flow for our web api and angular single page application i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions let me know in the comment section and uh, i will see you soon with another video thank you thanks for watching if you like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel like it share it comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon